So I thought, what better place to explain wave functions than, well, essentially the beach, where there's lots of waves. So this really solely is a, a mathematical description of what the shape of a wave is. And for, the, for a wave function, what is so fascinating about it is that for the longest time, uh, science has understood that a, a wave really essentially is like where the particle's position can be found. So you have an actual physical particle, um, which like an electron, and when you have something like quantum mechanics where it discusses the potential of that being either a actual particle or a wave, what exactly does that mean? So the wave function, what it's actually measuring is the probability of the location in which you actually can find this particle. Because when you think about it, for the longest time they were thinking, hmm, well is the electron actually just being smeared throughout space and it being like a wave-like material? Because when you think about it with waves like in an ocean, that truly is actually just um, lots of separate little water particles that are all being combined together to be in the shape of a wave. But when you explain it like as if it's its own physical entity, that's a little bit different. And so scientists ended up deriving an equation which is known as the wave function. And this really does actually calculate the probability in which you can find a wave. And this gets me really excited because it makes me um, be able to tie back into uh, the no boundary proposal through Stephen Hawking um, and also his colleagues. So he, him and Penrose were working on this together, and they decided to look at the universe from a wave-like, uh, or from a wave function um, perspective. So when you're actually applying um, the wave function mathematical equations to the early universe, something kind of funny happens. So they wanted to look at the early universe as not a point of singularity. When you zoom all the way back, all the way, all the way back um, to the Big Bang, Hawking wanted to know what was there before that. And um, this actually is not a new idea. In about the, the 30s, when the Big Bang was uh, first uh, theorized and when it, when it first was actually um, created, the idea of it, um, and it was found out that there actually was a Big Bang, there was an idea that potentially there was something that always had existed before that. And with the no boundary proposal, Hawking believes that there was a point that space and time actually formed a sort of a surface. And the surface um, it w had no edges and it was forever existing. So there was actually no point of singularity. And within the surface um, is where the actual uh, spring of uh, the evolution of the universe really began. So there was always this area in which time and space had existed and it was indefinite. And the way in which Stephen Hawking decided to try and apply this idea, this hypothesis, this proposal into actual scientific method terms was um, through a few different things, including a wave function. And uh, what this actually meant was taking the probabilistic values in which the wave function actually applies to things like quantum mechanics, this got applied to the cosmological scale, and this is known as quantum cosmology. And he looked at all the different potentials in which the early universe had to have existed in order for there to be um, the, the shape of the universe in which it is today, but also all the different potential histories um, that would have existed before a Big Bang. So there was a fly in my sweater. So through this equation, it pretty much is like an elimination process. And it is able to eliminate all the, the potential outcomes in which the universe would have existed at a point of singularity and took all those out and then looked at all the other options. And um, what he ended up finding was that there's a large array of probabilities based off of the wave function on a, a quantum cosmological scale that there may have always been an existence of a universe um, and that there really was no point of singularity that it didn't just spring up out of existence out of nowhere. So this was pretty ex interesting. And now to actually get into the math, I'm going to draw out a little bit of the equations for you guys and break down every single uh, variable that's actually in it. Now let's take one of the universe theories, right? This one is, as you can see, with a point of singularity right here. This is with the Big Bang Theory um, that says that there was a point of singularity in which nothing had existed. And then... Um, life as we know it sprung up out of existence due to something happening here and um, expanded into the universe today in which we know it. Now the thing is, you have something known as the Lorentz symmetry, which essentially is an equivalence to 
observational symmetry. This pretty much says that based on special relativity, everything is moving with respect to one another. The laws of physics remain active, remain the same, remain consistent with every single thing in the universe, um, with each thing remaining as in respect to one another. That means that everything is expanding within the same symmetrical distances from one another. Now what you can see here, it's uh, kind of crazy that I drew out. It's also a little bit in the shade. That's a little because the sun's going down and I'm on the beach. Um, but what you actually can see right here is you have the wave function. This is the wave function of the no boundary proposal. And it actually combines um, the initial conditions, which is what's right here. That's this function right here. And it also combines um, the, the theory of dynamics, which is right here. And it's super important effort to understand the theory of dynamics in the situation because it really is trying to weigh out just what uh, physical conditions it takes for the universe to exist in order for there to be um, uh, uh, the no boundary proposal to actually be to be able to stand. And what it's interesting that you can see here is um, what you have right here is a, a scale of the universe, right? This is one of our early, uh, one of our, our theories that we have right now, that scientists have right now, is that this is where there actually was like a surface that had existed here, um, that there never actually was like an initial point of singularity, but there actually was an, a forever existing surface. It's sort of like, if you look at it close, it's kind of like when you look at the North Pole of of the earth and its curvature and it eventually just comes out and there's there's no point in which it actually began so you have this surface where time began time started but there always was space and what happened was as time started space started to expand and what's interesting about this is this cal is equation oh little child oh my gosh oh no <laughs> make this stuff up oh man <laughs> he literally um so so he just stepped on um the, the <laughs> oh man guys i swear you can't you can't make this stuff up um uh, so that there goes um the <laughs> he pretty much is telling stephen hawking right now that you can you have to eliminate this part of the equation and then this is all that would actually exist and this will explain the early universe because he pretty much just erased all of uh, the theory of dynamics right now <laughs> <laughs> oh man, on that note, I'm going to continue the rest of this video not on the beach. Okay, bye guys.